Hoyas are absolutely amazing plants. They come in over 500 different varieties. They come in different leaf size, leaf shape, and they also bloom as well. So let's talk about some common issues. Let's talk about yellowing leaves. If you have a Hoya and you have one or two yellow leaves, I wouldn't be too concerned about it. It could be the normal leaf cycle of a plant. What I mean by that is that the leaf has done its job, it's photosynthesized, produced energy for the plant, and now the leaf is starting to become yellow and dying off. So that's a normal leaf cycle of a plant. However, if you find that your Hoya has multiple yellowing leaves and it's occurring all of a sudden, it's an indication the plant isn't happy. The most common reason is from overwatering, whether giving the plant too much water, whether the soil is staying too moist for far too long, or the water, uh, when watering the plant, it's not actually draining out of the drainage holes. So I would make sure that I, what I do for myself is I make sure that my Hoya is completely dry before I water it. I make sure the water is draining out of the drainage hole and I get rid of any excess water. If I find that the drainage hole is uh, blocked, whether the plant is root bound, then I'll repot my Hoya. Also, I use a soil mixture that is well draining. It will still hold a little bit of moisture, but it will drain still very well. So my Hoya mixture consists of 70% premium potting mix and 30% perlite. Sometimes I will change the perlite into pumice um, because pumice is also another material to add into soil that helps to aerate the soil and also help with the drainage as well. And I also make sure that when I do repot my Hoya, it's always in a pot that has drainage holes in it. Brownish or crispy leaves. If you feel your Hoya and the leaves actually feel very crispy, they don't feel plump as usual, then the most common reason is from underwatering your Hoya. There are different types of Hoyas. There's ones that are, the leaves are quite thick, they're quite succulent. They can stay a long time before watering. However, there are semi-tropical and tropical Hoyas and their leaves tend to be a lot thinner and they are used to the tropical rainforest where there's abundant water in the atmosphere. Uh, so a lot of humidity and abundant water in the soil as well. So they can't withstand a long periods between watering. They need a watering more often. If you're finding that this is occurring, then water your plant more often. It could be also be a sign of over fertilizing your Hoya. So a Hoya, yes, it does need its nutrients, but they don't need too much fertilizing. And so over fertilizing can burn the roots and cause damage to the leaves. I tend to fertilize my Hoya during the growing season or if I'm finding my Hoya is growing. And I, and I fertilize it once a month and it's a half well, half uh, concentration of the liquid fertilizer on um, what I use is We The Wild, but if you don't have that liquid fertilizer, you can use something else. So uh, try and reduce your fertilizing if you're finding that the leaves are going brown and crispy. The other reason is from heat wave. So it could be all of a sudden uh, too much heat on the Hoya and it's actually sucked so much water out of the soil and caused the leaves to go brown and crispy or other reason is that is the Hoya sitting underneath heating if the heat or air is blowing right onto the Hoya once again it's going to reduce the humidity around the plant and that also can dry up the water in the soil a lot quicker and cause the leaves suddenly to go brown and crispy so what I'd recommend to do is yes water your Hoya more often move it away from uh, where heating is directly onto the plant and also increasing the humidity and reduce your fertilizing of your Hoya. Limp or droopy leaves. If you find that your Hoya is starting to droop, the most common reason is the temperature. Hoyas like warm temperatures, roughly around about 70 to 80 Fahrenheit, which is roughly about 21 to 27 degrees. There are some Hoyas that can withstand colder temperatures below that, but anything below 50 Fahrenheit or 10 degrees, then it's too cold for Hoya. Also, they can't withstand frost. So I'd recommend check where your Hoya is positioned. 
Is it near a window? Is it getting too cold, especially at night during winter? Or is it in the area where there's too much draft? So it's near a doorway where there's air coming through. It's, is it near air conditioning or heating? Or basically near a window where there's too much airflow and it's reducing the temperature around the plant. Also check for pests. There are certain pests that will make the plant droop and those main pests are mealybugs and aphids. The reason for that is these types of pests, they suck up all the juice in the plant and causing the plant to actually droop and actually become limp. So check your plant for pests and just treat it appropriately. So I tend to treat my plants with what's called neem oil and I use a solution that consists of one liter of water, 10 mils of neem oil and 10 mils of dishwashing solution. I shake it all up and I spray it all over the plant, the stems, and make sure I uh, spray underneath the leaves as well. And I will do that every single week until I see all the pests are gone. Leggy Hoya. So what I mean by that is that the internode, which is the distance between each different leaves on the stem is getting longer. It's an indication that the plant is not getting enough sunlight and it's growing to try and find and seek more sunlight. So I'd recommend you move your Hoya to an area that receives a lot more indirect sunlight. You may want to even consider and give it direct sunlight, especially in the morning, two or three hours of morning sunlight, which is less harsh compared to the afternoon sunlight to boost the amount of light the plant is receiving. That will encourage the plant to produce leaves rather than extending its stem to seek out the light. Slow or stunted growth. If you're finding that this is occurring, it could be just the season. Maybe it's winter. Hoyas don't tend to grow that much in winter. And I honestly found that a lot of my Hoyas in winter don't grow anything at all. And that's quite normal, it's quite common. However, if you are in the growing season, which is the spring and the summer, I would check, is the Hoya root bound? Now, Hoyas do like their roots to be kind of tight, but they don't like to be root brown. There still needs to be some soil so the roots can still expand. So check how long has it been since you repotted your Hoya. The other reason is lack of fertilizing. So Hoyas don't need that much fertilizing, but during the growing season, they still require some fertilizer. So I do use a half concentration of liquid fertilizer to make sure that my plant is, uh, has enough nutrients to actually grow and also to encourage it to bloom. The other reason is that the plant may not have enough sunlight, so move it into the area where it's receiving more sunlight. Falling leaves. If you're finding one or two your Hoya leaves are dropping, especially in winter, that's quite normal, it's quite common. I wouldn't worry about it. However, if you're finding all of a sudden your Hoya leaves, a lot of them are dropping, then it's a common sign of root rot. So check your roots on your Hoya. Are the roots white, which is normal, healthy roots? However, if you're finding the roots are grayish, brownish, look mushy, you smell the soy and it's got a funky smell coming out of it, then it's a sign of root rot. It's an emergency repotting, so you've got to repot the plant into a soil mixture that's more well draining. Also check the humidity. There are some Hoyas that require higher humidity, like your semi-tropical and your tropical Hoyas. They like humidity above 60%. If you go anything more than 80%, be careful because that can actually cause mold in the household. So I tend to stay safe and leave my humidity around about 60 to 70% for my tropical Hoyas. I try and avoid 80% because I definitely don't want mold in the household. It also could be a sign that the plant is too cold and it can't withstand the cold and it's dropping its leaves or sudden. The third reason is not enough light. So move your Hoya in an area where it's receiving more light. And the other reason is pests. Pests can devastate a Hoya, especially your thinner type leaves Hoya. So pests, check for pests that are most common, which are the mealybugs, the aphids, the scales, the um, fungus gnats, and also, forgotten the last one, 
Yeah, forgotten that. There's another one anyway. Brown spots or white powdery spots on the leaves. If you're noticing this is occurring, this is a fungal disease, the brown spots could be rust spots, the powdery white spots could be powdery mildew, and I would treat my Hoya with insectic, uh, with a fungal insecticide to get rid of all the fungus disease. I use Yates Fungal Gun. If you don't happen to have that pot around your area, just use any other fungal insecticide in your local area, and I make sure I spray the top, I spray the bottom and all the stems as well. It also, if it's a hot and sunny day, I will move the Hoya into the area that doesn't receive direct sunlight because if you're spraying with a fungal insecticide and then you give it direct sunlight or too much sunlight, it can actually burn the leaves. So I still spray it, but just move it away a little bit further away from the sunlight while you're treating the plant. Also, I would encourage you to increase the airflow. Fungus tends to occur if there's not enough airflow. Maybe the plant is too tight together compared with other plants and so there's not enough airflow and it's encouraging fungus to uh, multiply and occur on the leaves. The other reason is that the soil can become too moist for too long or the leaves have become wet and it stayed wet for too long. So I would try and do those things to try and avoid fungal disease on the leaves in the future. Red spots on the leaves. Unfortunately, this can be a sign of a viral disease. You can try and save it by cutting the affected leaves, but sometimes it may not even work. And while you're saving the plant, that viral disease can affect your other Hoyas as well. So definitely isolate it in a different area. Also, uh, sometimes you can't just save it because there's no cure. So you may also have to consider and just completely getting rid of your plan, which is a shame, but sometimes that's what you've got to do. And also the leaves that you have cut off, please don't pop them in the compost pile because if you pop those affected leaves in the compost pile and then you use a compost for your household plants, that can affect your other plants. So I would throw those affected leaves straight into the bin or even better, burn it. Lack of flowers or flower buds dropping off. Hoyas are known for their absolutely stunning flowers, otherwise known as wax flowers. However, it can be very disheartening if this occurs. And the most common reason is that, are you touching your Hoya flower buds, otherwise known as penuncles? If a penuncle is still developing and you're going to touch it, which I tend to do, it can actually damage the plant. So try and avoid touching the flower bud. The other reason is that it could be lack of humidity. So try and increase the household humidity to above 60% and this will encourage the penuncle, the flower bud, to actually bloom. If you enjoyed today's content, I have another video on how to encourage your Hoya to bloom. I'll pop a link down below and a link above as well. Go and check it out.